the other day I did a, a video on um, Owen Benjamin's breakdown of Wizard of Oz, the movie. He did like a kind of like a um, a rundown of, of how it uh, related to uh, economics at the time was written and it was great, it was great but uh, I was thinking about the um, that movie and I know it has like some Mandela effects with it uh, the one that I, that freaks me out the most though it, and it might uh, you might not have um, heard of it or seen it, is the Scarecrow brandishing a, a gun. I think it's a revolver. Uh, you know, I grew up as a kid watching that movie. Seen it a bunch of times and, you know, different uh, interpretations of it. And I've never uh, seen him having a gun in it. And it's actually in the movie, too. I mean, it's obviously not in the book. But uh, if you watch the movie now... Uh, Scarecrow carries a gun, which is kind of weird. Like, uh, if he had a gun, that would kind of have solved a lot of problems. I mean, flying monkeys, any, nothing would have been a problem for them, right? I mean, kind of strange. I forget about that one, but, um, yeah, that's usually one that, that sticks out to people. If you haven't been affected by it, um, I, it, it doesn't matter where I am. People are gonna walk in, but uh, yeah, it's just, it's trippy. You can find pictures of it if you just like Google uh, scarecrow gun. There's pictures of him from scenes in the movie uh, where he's uh, just brandishing a pistol. I don't know if he ever shoots it. I don't think I've watched it. Um, since this uh, change happened but pretty trippy another one that's weird too that I know wasn't wasn't there before for sure was uh, the Captain Picard Star Trek one where uh, for whatever reason he now carries around a crystal and um it's in like a significant portion of the episodes now. It was his, his favorite crystal. He keeps it on his desk and often walks around rubbing it as he pontificates on things. And it even shows some scene transitions where they uh, focus on the crystal, where they zoom back in uh, between scenes and it'll just be a shot of the crystal. And it comes out and it pulls out to show him at his desk. It's uh, it's fucking weird. And like The Wizard of Oz, I haven't gone back and watched uh, the episodes to see it in action. I've just seen the photos of it online. And I remember when I first heard about this, the uh, crystal, some kind of collectibles a company was selling a... Uh, a prop, like a, uh, a, a, pro, a a fake prop, like a makeup prop, like a, a, what do you call those? I don't know what the fuck they're called. I was going to say facsimile, but I didn't sleep well. That's my excuse for right now. Oh, this is the human trafficking building. What? I didn't say that. But, um, yeah, he has, she has a fucking crystal now. It's bizarre. It doesn't even make sense with the character. Like it, and and the same thing with the with all of these with the dolly braces thing with the, uh, the Star Wars ones that whole thing is still something that fascinates me and I haven't really gotten a, a good explanation for any of it yet. Everyone always points to CERN, but I don't know. I feel like they want us to think they're uh, the cause of it. Because they go out of their way to do weird stuff. Like they had the old man sitting in the chair there. Holding the sign with the Mandela on it. And then a few years ago, 
I remember it was, uh, it was before I moved here, right after I moved here, so it was like 2016. They had a, a, a booklet, like a tourist brochure, that they would hand out to like teachers to give to students who were doing like a, a tour there. And they had a, and in the booklet for the tour of, of the facility, they had illustrations throughout of different Mandela effects. It showed like the queen at her, uh, you know, the mirror mirror thing. It had a picture of C-3PO, it had a picture of Darth, it just illustrated in there without any accompanying text or anything to explain why they're, why they're there. It was just supposed to be whimsical children things, I guess. Fucking weird. But yeah, after that, uh, after that gun, I was thinking about that gun thing after doing the one the other night. Sometimes I do these things and forget to add things I want to talk about. Wow, this is really, really lame, this one. Sorry. But uh, yeah, I just had to, had to throw that out there if anyone's uh, not seen that. The scarecrow gun thing. Pretty nuts. And it seems like things have kind of calmed down around the, the Mandela effect thing. Like, I don't, I'm sure a lot of them are happening all the time, but I don't, I just don't follow it anymore. You know, the point has been made. You know, reality in some way is malleable. And um, rather than uh, helping to shed light on some of the intricacies of the current situation. I think if anything, it's made things more confusing. But, um, which could very well be the point of this all, to sow confusion, to make people not trust uh, their own memories, or in, in the cases of some of the other stuff happening here, their own minds. The other night I was, uh, I was down here by Ross, and, uh, when you're in the presence of something, well, I shouldn't say you, in my experience, when I've been in the presence of something that would be considered supernatural or uh, interdimensional, well, I shouldn't say dimensional. That's confusing. It's, it should be, it's more a frequency thing because dimensions are, are different in geometry than they are in physics and neither definition fits what I think people mean when they say uh, interdimensional. These things, these um, low vibrational beings are on frequencies. We are only attuned to so many, we only see a very small band while in this, uh, in the bodysuit. When in our current, when, current, in our current state, but when in our regular state, we perceive all frequencies. But anyway, the, these things aren't interdimensional more than they are, uh, I guess, interfrequency. That doesn't make sense, but words, I'm going to go with it. So um, I just finished doing one in uh, a, a video, and I put the camera down, and then I heard him. Now, as I started to say but uh, my uh, Diet Coke can induce Alzheimer's led me astray from it. When, you're in the, when I've been in the presence of these things, uh, I, I don't realize it until later. Sometimes uh, days, sometimes weeks. In, in the case of one, like a, a couple months, I don't know what that is. I don't know if that's your a defense mechanism that your your brain gets together for you as a way to protect you or if it's something there to uh, to keep you from interacting properly I don't know what it is but in any case you don't realize it right away even if you should and I should have and I think I did but I I just automatically kept walking uh, I, I came back later, but let me not get ahead of myself. I put, I was doing a video about something, put the camera down, and I heard it. 
and it was in a guy, obviously. That's the only way you're gonna interact with one here, is if they're in a body, usually, it has to, well, not usually, it has to be low enough vibration to get in there. So it happens with a lot of homeless people. But it can also get in like really inebriated people, drug addicts, things like that. So uh, I, I heard the screaming and he was screaming and I, they all sound the same. Like there's something, um, and, and they tend to use a lot of the same words. It's not a tone. It's not like it's this creep. Well, it is kind of creepy, but it's just a style of uh, screaming and carrying on. He was sitting there screaming, uh, pigs, I hate pigs, I hate pigs. Now people think, oh, he means cops. <laughs> but no, they all talk about pigs. I don't know. Well, I know why. It's a biblical story about um, demons trying to get into human bodies, but they were put into the bodies of pigs because they were the closest anatomy-wise. It's something like that. I, I probably just massacred that story. But So anyway, they demons and pigs have this thing together. And I, it took me a while to learn about that, though, because when I first started encountering them with my friend down in Chinatown three or four years ago, they would always uh, call me that. Not him. It seems like with... The, the whole demon thing with me and my buddy is they seem to be centered around him. They were trying to get him away from me. Uh, he was being uh, kind of held in their sway. He would occasionally um, just be taken over by them. And when this all first started happening, I was, you know, still an atheist. Uh, this was four or five years ago. I didn't understand what was happening. I thought it was uh, just some bizarre thing where these uh, homeless dudes were just trying to. Um, this video sucks, man. I'm not. I'm not getting this out right. I'm, something's throwing me off. But anyway, that's a whole other thing that I want to talk about when I get him down here. Uh, I think what happens to me sometimes is when I'm here talking and there's a lot of people around me and they're not saying anything everyone's just being very hush quiet it's kind of tough not that I think people are listening to me but um, you know you walk in a group of people I'm yapping about demons and fucking pedos and bullshit and um, you can hear a fucking pin drop around me it's like whatever so sometimes I gotta let the people go so, um, I'll get my shit together. I'm going to pull this together. I'm going to pull this together and make this valuable in some way. So, uh, I'm going way off the tracks with this, this demon story from the other night, though. So, anyway, I, I, I walked by him, and he's screaming the, uh, the thing about the pigs. Pigs, pigs, pigs. And I looked over, and, um, I saw him. He was a younger guy, maybe in his 20s. Looked just like a, um, a homeless dude. Not not overly like dirty or anything, but um, you know, just just what you would. I don't know. It's hard to describe. Just like your average sort of homeless guy, you know. Stephanie said you. Don't and have um, Stephanie said that. You can't walk away from a kid like that around here. They'll snatch those things up here. This is fucking kid ceiling central in this place. So um, yeah. So he's screaming about the pigs. So. I knew it was one of them. You can tell by the voice. You know, like, it's hard to explain. It's not like a, a certain um, sound. It's just the way they talk. You know? When I was having my problems with them, uh, they all talk the same. But it would be in different bodies, you know, over a period of time. Like, during this one intense period, like every day, when I was hanging on my friend... Uh, we spent a lot of time together because he lived down here at the time. And they, uh, they would continue this, this conversation with us over a period of days through different people trying to get him away from me to separate us in some way. 
And I was like, why do they always call me a pig? Uh, what I didn't understand is that uh, they're always yelling about it. So I, I heard him first, then I walked by and I saw him sitting there uh, yelling at people walking by, you know. And um, I just kept walking. And um, it's a weird thing because on some level I, I knew what it was. And there was no fear. I've never had fear around these things. And I think, uh, you know, maybe that's because when I'm in their presence is something keeping me from realizing what they are, even though I should know what they are. So I knew what it was on some level before I even saw him because I heard the voice. But on another level, there's a part of my brain saying, uh, psycho, weirdo, just a crazy homeless guy. Even though I know what it is. I don't know what that is. Like, what is that? It's got to be some kind of defense thing to keep you away from them or something. I don't know. But anyway, so I was, uh, I was around the block. I was up the next block when I kind of pulled it together and said, it's a demon over there. He, I don't think he saw me. Um, I briefly looked at him. I crossed the street so I didn't walk right in front of him. I saw him in, a, in like a diagonal kind of way. And uh, I kept walking to the store. I'm like, should I go back? And I'm thinking, should I go just try to get him on camp? Of course I should, you know what I mean? But it's like, there's been times when I've gone out hoping to catch one. And uh, nothing. I haven't seen one in about two years. And when I did see it it was like a brief thing it was one crossing a street over by where I live and he looked over at me and made the space like he opened his mouth like ah like uh it, it's fun they're so they're not scary they're goofy and they're gross uh and when they're in like the body like you can't of course you're not seeing them you're seeing the body of the person that they're in but in some weird kind of place you can see like the their expressions it's impossible to explain so um i get a couple blocks and i'm like i gotta go back there i gotta go back and try to catch him so i immediately turn the phone on phone camera and start talking like explaining the situation like all right this is what happened i'm going back over there now and I was like, if he's not there, no one's ever going to see this because I'm not going to upload it, which I, I didn't, you know, because there's no point. And um, he was gone. Uh, yeah. Kind of weird. Like I said, I hadn't seen one in a couple of years. All this stuff kicked off from me, uh, which then led to all this other stuff. I want to say 2017 was the... Because the first year I came here, things were basically normal. Well, they weren't normal. I just didn't realize what was happening. In fact, things started happening the very first day I came here. But uh, I didn't recognize it for what it was. Even when the activity was all around me, uh, me and my friend, I didn't realize what it was. It took a while for this all to sink in because in my mind... Uh, none of that stuff was real. It didn't exist. You know, I was, uh, like I said, I was an atheist for the longest time. Most of my life. It just didn't, like, it's not that I was, uh, anti-God or anything. It's just not anything I, I thought too much about. And, um, religion itself always kind of turned me off. It still does. You know, religion and spirituality are two different things. And it seems like the more a religion you see when you're younger, the less uh, apt you are to become involved in spirituality because it's so fucking crazy. Religion, I mean. It comes on so hard, you know, and it just turns you off, like the religion thing. Or it did to me. It was just weird and fucking over the top. This fucking thing is getting long. 20 minutes. 
I gotta wrap this up. There's nothing left to say. Sorry, Demon. Didn't get it on camera. I suck. First one I saw in two years. Uh, because I didn't start filming it because even though I realized it was there, uh, something in my brain made me keep walking because there's some other kind of thing in your head. Yeah. I think I got all this down. Maybe those doctors were right. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe psychiatry is real, <laughs> you know. And, and I am, and I am just fucking no, because a lot of this stuff I've experienced, I've experienced with other people. I mean, it's a case of like, and it, and I can corroborate a lot of my findings with people online who also have had these same experiences, and it checks out across many different people, long distances, and um. But still, even even still, if I if I was alone during all these happenings, um, probably would find a way to convince myself that it was just in my mind. So I'm, I'm thankful that uh, that's not the case. And from there, everything just started happening. I started getting the synchronicities, started getting the feeling of being plugged in started understanding divinity um, I would get some kind of weird breakthrough and then go online to compare my findings with other people and um, someone had already had that happen or had already been there uh, and that's been uh, my life since 2017 now but yeah I'm, I'm gonna try to catch one next time although I haven't seen one in two years the other night so maybe a couple of years from now I'll catch another one don't blame the teacher or blame the school